Welcome to this week in Missouri Politics. 48 hours till the primary, 72 hours where a special session comes back. We are joined at the man's going to be at the center of everything. Mm -hmm. When they get done counting the votes Tuesday night, you're at the hottest race in the state here in your Senate district in St. Louis, and you filed the hottest bill in special session. Senator mm -hmm. Andrew Canning, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's just start with special session. Let's start mm -hmm. with what it's, the call ex currently has. Mm -hmm. It's a series of crime measures, and I guess it's theoretically statewide, but it's for the city of St. Louis. It has an exploding murder rate. Kansas City does as well, but a lot of the tension, obviously, in the state comes right to St. Louis, right? You're in St. Louis County, not the city, but you're right here at the middle of it. Tell us what is actually in the current crime proposal. Sure. I mean, we, we have a, a murder epidemic here in the, in the city of St. Louis, and in my, in my opinion, we need, to, we need to do everything we possibly can to get, um, to get law and order. Um, here in the city of St. Louis, um, you know, one 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 issue is they are having an issue with um, police getting uh, recruiting, and so um, they want to be able to um, uh, have police officers live outside the city of St. Louis so they can recruit. I mean, the uh, city schools are are not necessarily the best, and so, um, some people don't want to live there. So let's uh, in Kansas City, it's a little bit different. I, I heard the, I listened to some of the debate uh, in the committee uh, this week, and I. I did hear, you know, if you go to St. Louis, it is a very small footprint. You have very few places to live, not very diverse. In Kansas mm -hmm. City, you can live. I mean, the footprint of Kansas City is enormous. You That's can right. Live in it's a lot Cass bigger. County, Platte yeah. County, Clay County, Jackson County. It is a little bit of a different thing. I can understand why it's just a matter of hard to find a house that you'd want, the school district you'd want, in a very small footprint. I mean, the St. Louis City's population has fluctuated a lot, but that footprint's pretty small. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, yeah, the, the most important thing, I actually did file a bill um, giving the, our Attorney General concurrent jurisdiction. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Now, I heard the governor and politicians mm -hmm. talk about, when they talk about St. Louis crime, they talked about the McCloskey's got their, the, the gun people in front of the mansion, got their gun taken away and charged with a crime or something. Then I talk, heard Kim Gardner. Now, nothing in that talks about those two things. You Correct. filed the piece of legislation that I think everybody actually is talking about. Mm -hmm. And concurrent jurisdiction is a term that people have heard break down exactly what that means just to a simple West Butler County hillbilly. So, yeah, so what it does is allows our attorney general to go in and prosecute murders in the city of St. Louis. Um, mm -hmm. The best way to get the murder rate down is to get the actual criminal criminals prosecuted and put them behind bars. And, um, you know, we, we, what we've seen, we've seen the conviction rate in the current circuit attorneys go down and the number of prosecutions go down and I think in the murder rates going up. And so we need an all hands on a deck approach. And I think the attorney general, he can prosecute murders on day one and he'll get convictions and get these uh, violent criminals off the streets. And let me walk through this. So right now, the problem is people are getting arrested. The police are catching the person they believe did them. They committed the murder. They're turning in the circuit attorney's office and they're just not getting convictions, not getting charged. Yeah, so you have both. You have convictions have gone down mm -hmm. while the crime's gone up and then the conviction rate has actually gone down also. So less convictions and lower rate. So when you say concurrent jurisdiction, is this just for the city of St. Louis or there's not a murder epidemic in Reynolds County? There's not a murder epidemic in Pettis County. Is this gonna affect them or just the city? So um, my bill only affects the city. However, I'm certainly open to making it um, statewide um, because if there's a murder that happens and the attorney general can step in and help, I'm gonna support that. Um, law and order is what we need. But uh, a lot of rural folks have been historically against this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Governor Nixon, when he was AG, wanted all, all, every attorney general is going to want this. It's more sure. powerful for the office. Right. But if you're in a lot of parts of Missouri, it, we went about 25 years until this last election before there was a Republican attorney general. Mm -hmm. You could have a Democrat attorney general stepping on all kinds of things they don't think. You, you want to talk about police? Maybe a, an attorney general will look at that very differently. Uh, I've heard a lot of folks say they could sign off on it just for the city and maybe just for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you think you can pass a bill that affects the whole state? Well, I think in a special session, it makes, certainly makes it a lot easier to pass a bill mm -hmm. if the call were to be extended because it, you know, you're focusing just on that one issue. Sure. And so in a special session, you can, in that laser focus, even if there's stiff opposition, you can still get it well, let's done. Let's break it down. You've done a little filibuster in your day. Uh, <laughs> you know that everybody wants to go home Thursday afternoon. Everybody's wife expects them and husband expects them home. Kids expect mm -hmm. them home. They have plans. So you know that Thursday afternoon you're probably going to want to head home. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have a light in the tunnel. The light at the end of this tunnel is 90 days away, right? So right. It's, it changes the filibuster. Now, Carla May sat there uh, last week and told us if that's in the call, nothing's passing. Mm -hmm. That is a harder promise to keep in a special session. That's right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, when, when you're dealing in regular session and you're dealing with thousands of bills, um, you know, each bill is competing for that time. Yeah. 
But if you only have one bill, that makes it very difficult for the people that are opposed, the senators that are opposed to it to maintain a filibuster. And that's the question I think maybe is on folks' minds. If you pass what's in the current call right now, do you believe the murder rate in the city of St. Louis will go down? Um, I, you know, I, I think the impact would be much greater if we had my piece. I think my, the concurrent jurisdiction would go much further than anything else in the current bill. You, think, you know, just from the outside looking in, I'm a, I'm a guest in St. Louis. I'm not as frequently a guest since I can't go to the Cardinal games, which I wish they would address. But it, it looks to me like cops are a little demoralized right now. Cops are a little cautious, and maybe some of that's good, right? But if I was, if I was a cop, God forbid, the, who, would, who would have me, but I would be a little... I would take a pause right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and, and Kim Gardner well, has certainly I, been at war with the cops, mm -hmm. is your bill a sign from the state that maybe is a shot in the arm to the cops to, to say we got your back? Absolutely. Um, I, I think it would. Um, you know, when they're collecting evidence, um, they want to know that the evidence is actually getting used. Sure. So um, I think, I absolutely think it would help. End of the day, I think people look that in Missouri, they look at Seattle and Portland, and that's like the one thing they don't want and wouldn't have. Right. Uh, to me, that's what this special session is an attempt to avoid. Um, can you avoid Seattle and Portland without maybe looking at a piece of legislation like Brian Williams, is, who has support of police unions, that say, hey, there are some things we could do to make standards more uniform to help policing? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I, I, you know, hopefully we wouldn't go to what happened in Seattle and what's happening in Portland. Um, I mean, that's just completely atrocious. You have a complete loss of law and order. Um, and, and so, you know, I, hopefully our mayor would not allow that to happen. And I don't think she would. Um, but, you know, what we need in the city of St. Louis is we need law and order. And we need, we need every tool in the toolbox to make that happen. So... But at the end of the day, can you really address just the law and order segment? I mean, when you have this many Missourians who see a problem, is there not, can you really, really control the situation by just addressing one end of it? Um, I mean, it's, you know, if you look back um, in, you know, history, you know, some people don't want to look at history. Sure. You know, no society in the history of the world has survived without some kind of police force. And sure. so, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. it just hasn't happened. Anarchy is something that does not exist in its true form. You know, the minute you have anarchy, um, you know, a dictator steps in. Yeah. And so, you know, a police force is very important. Obviously, we need to make sure if, um, you know, police is acting improperly that those people do get prosecuted. Um, but that's, that's a very small um, percentage of the police. Most of our police force um, are, are doing a great job. So let's talk about COVID. It's affected everyone, affected your district uh, like all the others. Uh, you have some of the larger, more successful school districts in the state of Missouri in, in your Senate district. Uh, right now, the governor has allowed local districts to, to make local decisions mm -hmm. on whether they go back to school or not. The county executive is uh, asked, I guess you could say, through the health department that, that schools go to virtual. What's your opinion on it? Um, I think especially K through 12, I mean, uh, 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 elementary schools, um, but almost all schools, but they should go back. Um, I think it's relatively low risk um, for if, certainly if you could have a teacher that is, um, you know, that might be in a high risk category and maybe they need to be um, doing some of the online. There'll be, certainly be some kids and parents that want their kids doing online. So maybe you could, um, you know, deploy those to do the online teaching. But for most kids, this is low risk and we need our kids in the school. So when I was a kid, my dad owned a construction company. He had to work all day, that's what he's gonna eat. My mom's a church secretary. She worked so we could eat. If my grandma was sick or couldn't watch me, I would have to go to a daycare, which would be generally a group of kids from around the area all congregated together for the day. Right. I don't, I don't know that some of these folks really live in the real world. I mean, a lot of folks don't have a nanny or something sitting around the house to watch the kids. So w one thing I have been doing is I've been knocking on doors, meeting constituents. Now when, when we're doing, we're, you know, we're wearing a mask, you know, ring doorbell, step back, create that social distancing. Um, but when I'm meeting with parents, they're kind of upset that the schools aren't meeting. Um, they, they want yeah. their kids in school. Well, I mean, in St. Louis County, you pay enough for them. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about your race. It'll be the hottest Senate race in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a traditionally Republican seat. This has been held, yeah, we talked about the Attorney General. He's your predecessor in that mm -hmm. seat. Uh, I do think it's a, it's a really interesting contrast. I think that in one way, you're both two of the most hardworking legislators, probably the two hardest working politicians most folks would, would know of in either party. But you're a very conservative legislator. Mm -hmm. uh, Representative Lavender's had a very liberal uh, time in the legislature. It is a real contrast for folks to choose in kind of southwest St. Louis County. Yep. Um, there's definitely going to be a strong contrast. Well, like I said, we're working hard. We're meeting constituents. Um, my opponent is, I, you know, 
best my knowledge is not actually knocking on doors and meeting constituents. There's a safe way to do it, and so I think that's going to help us gain ground. So when, what's good, what it, when you're talking to these folks, what's the biggest issue you're hearing actually on the doors? Um, I mean, law and order is definitely one of the top. Um, taxes is always um, important. I think people um, want lower taxes or low taxes. They want their taxes raised, um, and they want their kids in school. So uh, last question. Senator Lemke was here last time. Uh, you're part of the Conservative Caucus. He predicted you'd have, you have six members now. He thought you'd raise to nine. When the primaries and the votes are counted Tuesday night, where will your caucus be? I think it'll be between nine and ten. Nine and ten. Um, you know, I, 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 I'll go ahead and be more optimistic, so I'll just say <laughs> that ten. That fits. That fits. The two of you. <laughs> well, Senator, hope as the race uh, unfolds in the fall, you'll come back and share your views with us. Sure. Will do. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with our Opinion Maker panel. Phil Crisfinelli has come across the river to join us after this. Mark Montevani alone took on the corrupt machine. Now he'll finish the job. Mark Montevani. He built a national business creating nearly 800 good paying jobs. And during the last recession, Mark cut his pay in half to save jobs. The only candidate for county executive with the experience to rebuild our economy after COVID and create a more equitable county with more opportunity for everyone. Career politicians haven't gotten it done. Democrat Mark Montevani. Real leadership for a change. Your energy needs are changing. That's why at Ameren, Missouri, we're not waiting on the future. We're building it with the Smart Energy Plan, advancing thousands of projects across the state, helping reduce emissions through cleaner energy sources, boost reliability with self-healing equipment, and better withstand storms with new composite poles. Moving Missouri forward and bringing us all a little closer together. That's energy at work, Ameren, Missouri. Mike Parson served in law enforcement for 22 years. A former sheriff, Parson is tough on crime. Governor Parson is standing up for victims, investing in better mental health services, and cracking down on violent crime and drugs. Governor Parson's anti-crime initiatives have led to the arrests of hundreds of violent criminals and gang members. A former sheriff, a conservative, tough on crime governor. Mike Parson is making Missouri families safer. Billions of our tax dollars go to Washington, D.C. And those tax dollars, where do they go? To 37 other states like California and New York to pay for their health care. Amendment 2 would fix that. By expanding Medicaid, Amendment 2 would bring our tax dollars back to Missouri to protect thousands of health care jobs, help keep our rural hospitals open, boost our economy, and deliver health care to more veterans and hardworking Missouri families. Vote yes on Amendment 2. Welcome back to this week in Missouri Politics, Opinion Maker Panel Time. Frank Cantanzaro, the president of the St. Louis Young Republicans. Welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me, Scott. Phil Cristofanelli, welcome back across the river. Glad to be here. Representative Doug Beck, South County. Welcome back, sir. Thank you for having Got me. Got the Cardinals playing finally. It's got to make your constituents happy. <laughs> yeah, they're happy. Kinship between Butler County and South County around the Cardinals. A lot of Cardinal fans. Brad Baker, uh, Democrat uh, attorney. Attorney. Well, what exactly could we say? I think we could say Democrat attorney for sure, right? I think that fits pretty well. Hot Twitter well. account? You know, you, you come for a hot take, you stay for the humor. Well, you're the one that lives where all the attention is on this special session. I mean, I'm sure it's worded differently, but this is about the murder rate in St. Louis, right? So uh, they, they, they gaveled in, the Senate did, they referred the bill, they heard the bill. There wasn't a lot of opposition. I don't know if that was apathy or, or what it was, but uh, this uh, crime legislation, I don't hear a lot of folks excited that it's going to stop people getting murdered where you live. Well, and the problem is, is you look at what it, it, there's no actual creative solutions in there at all really addressing the issues. We're repeating some of the same stuff from the 80s and 90s that's already been shown not to work. That part of the bill wants to reduce uh, the age at which juveniles can be tried as adults. All of the science, all of the research, all the criminology says that's just, it has absolutely no deterrent effect whatsoever. So it's not going to do anything, unfortunately. And while I commend the governor and uh, the legislature for wanting to take a look at the issue, because crime is obviously a problem in, in St. Louis uh, City and, and County, and we need to really get a handle on it, 
this isn't it. And it's time we actually look at real solutions that address the root causes, address the fact that people are losing jobs, they're losing homes. And if you think the crime rate's bad now, then what do you think is going to happen when people start actually getting evicted uh, due to losing their jobs from the COVID crisis? Frank, I thought the one thing that is, that is different is the witness protection part. It does lead you to think, if a lot of folks have been on Kim Gardner, if you can't get witnesses to come forward, you can't probably try cases, right? Well, absolutely. I mean, if that's if they're even trying cases in St. Louis City. You know, we're seeing a record number of homicide cases that are being dropped or not even being uh, investigated in the first place. I mean, we have a major issue. I think we all agree that St. Louis City, I mean, we're the murder capital of the country, and something has to be done. I think that that is going to be helpful, but, I mean, we need, we need some stronger legislation in here. Senator Koenig actually filed a bill. Not part, of the, not part of the call, would actually allow the Attorney General to come in, step in, offer the resources from him, his office to prosecute some of these homicide and carjacking cases in the city of St. Louis that are going without being prosecuted right now. Representative Chris Vanelli, uh, tell me how this is actually going to work. Senate's going to put something out, right? Maybe there's a call adjustment or not. My assumption is the House passes something about crime. But when you really break it down, I think the issue I've heard people talking about is you might could, could you get convinced to do a concurrent jurisdiction statewide? And if you could, could you convince a few districts over? I don't know that you could get it statewide, but I yeah. think you could get a narrowly tailored bill that looks just at the city of St. Louis, maybe for a short period of time with the sunset to address yeah. a very critical problem that we have. I'm the type of Republican that believes that we already have enough things that are legal in this state, and so making more things legal may not solve the problem. But if we actually prosecute the crimes we have on the books, mm -hmm. I think we can hold criminals accountable and bring law and order back to St. Louis, and this would be one way to do it. Sunset's going to be important in the Senate. It's going to be important in the House. I, you can do a lot more in the House uh, with, without uh, consensus, uh, so no, but um, I think a sunset is a good public policy anyway, so I would support it. Uh, Representative Beck, you're gonna, it's going to come to you if this doesn't happen. This was going to be some of those press during session. Residency for St. Louis Police will be pressed during session. Probably would have passed <coughs> if the, they'd had the full time in session. This will come to you uh, if you're in the Senate. Uh, if it doesn't happen in special session, what do you think? Uh, concurrent jurisdiction, is that something that, that you're going to let go through if you're a senator? So I don't know that the residency rules work, um, yeah. and I'm taking them also taking them away. I'm not sure that we even know that that'll work as far as getting more police officers in the city. We're not positive about any of these things happening. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, and, and, this, and, and all the crime legislation we seem to be doing is all reactionary. It's after the fact. We're not doing anything to be progressive in the front end to stop the crime from occurring. We're, we're looking at everything after the fact. And uh, the only part of this bill that I see that I really uh, like is the witness protection part, like you just mentioned earlier. Um, but the, the residency rule, um, you know, I, I usually like to defer to local control. Uh, I bounce mm -hmm. back and forth on the residency rules because St. Louis County doesn't have them. Um, Kansas City still has them. That's the, the, the part that's curious is, is why are we only focusing on St. Louis City? Violent crime is r rising throughout the entire state. So it is, and it, it's. But don't you think St. Louis, because it's the largest city, gets the attention whether it should? Oh, or Kansas not. City's the largest city, but. Uh, well, but I mean, the largest metro area. I mean, when yeah, folks talk true. about it, St. Louis, gets more attention than, than it, maybe warrants, but certainly <laughs> just gets the most attention. The thing I I asked the senator, if you're addressing this issue of crime, can you really? There is a lot of people, and, and and maybe there was a protest around the corner from my building in Jeff City at the governor's mansion. There's a lot of folks that feel like you should have at least part of this should be addressing some of the issues that protesters are bringing up. There is a lot of Missourians that have taken to the streets in the last three months that, that have an issue. And I, and I think a lot of them are not folks that necessarily go to protest all the time. Can you really address crime from just one angle? No, you can't. I, I, absolutely, I, I totally agree with you. And, and there's no one right answer. There's no one, one right answer for this thing. But I think if we actually wanted to try to solve crime, we would look at a lot of different issues, whether it's education, whether it's jobs, all the things that cause these things. Uh, just in a week or so, and it was just mentioned earlier, uh, I've talked to some police officers and some officials, and they're really concerned when people start losing their unemployment and they start getting evicted from their homes, what's going to happen to crime? Well, it's not going to go down. No. Frank, let's talk. Uh, you, you're the, you've been the young Republican president. You're the one that was in school the most recent, although Phil would look like it except for the beard. Uh, uh, I've seen all over the state the governor has kept with his local control idea, mm -hmm. speaking of local control, letting the school districts decide for themselves whether they go back to school or not. I hear folks in St. Louis already mad, wanting the state to come in and issue orders, and I hear rural folks saying, please, God, leave us alone, just let us do what we want. Seems like the low control works unless it doesn't work for you. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd agree with that statement, Scott. I think right now, and, and, and I agree with, with the Senator's response to that, we need to get our kids back in school. Obviously, safely, we can put procedures and, and safety measures in place so that our kids can get back safely, get back in the classroom, get our teachers back to teaching, and hopefully we get some of these parents of these kids who have been furloughed or laid off back to work. But I think, you know, let's let the local school districts decide what they want to do. I think that the governor made the right decision in that case. But, you know, I, I generally support getting kids back to school. I think it's important to have that environment. Brad, you got, you're, the, you're the one that knows a medical professional the best, maybe at this uh, particular desk. Uh, should kids be back in school? I mean, it, it's it, to say just fiat, we got to get them back in, that sure, that sounds great. But frankly, it's these are really difficult choices to Absolutely. grapple with. And if there was an easy solution to that, I think we would have done it. The problem is, clearly, it's a transmission vector. New uh, article just came out in the Journal of American Medical Association showing that the states and the, the localities that shut down their schools earliest back in spring had the lowest incidence of COVID exposures. And I have friends who've had their kids who brought it home from daycare just recently. Kids are vectors, and we need to well, recognize that that's what it is. Schools. I mean, there's a... Maybe in Chesterfield or Lee Summit, there's a bunch of nannies to watch their kids. In West Butler County, uh, there ain't no nanny to watch your kids. My parents both worked. I'd go to daycare, which would be a lot like school. And believe me, I, f especially for younger kids, trying to get them to do virtual learning, it's a challenge. I, I, I can't imagine yeah, trying to I think put an iPad in policies kid's for the Kardashians. The one thing, I, Doug, I love like, listening to you on the floor. You're a grown man with a job, with a family. Would you send your kids back to school right now? I personally would not. Um, and I would have to work it out, and, and it's, it's unfortunate that we're in this position now. I believe if we would have made decisions earlier on in this uh, pandemic, we wouldn't be here now. We wouldn't be talking about this now. We would be able to open our schools safely. We never let the numbers go down enough before we started reopening the Who state. Did, the county? Well, uh, well the governor, uh, for, for one. Uh, the county uh, did the best they could, but what we got to realize is, is the virus does not know a county line or a city line. If we don't have a comprehensive plan that covers the, actually the country, they're, they're, you're going to have issues. And, and so we're having hot spots now. We see what's going on across the country. We see the deaths are way above what they Would were predicted like back in May. Would you a national plan on anything that Donald Trump came up with? Well, <laughs> well and, uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. I'm not sure that's that funny. I would like, I mean, I have a re respect for Barack Obama. I'm not sure I want to. Well, I'll just ask Phil, would you want Barack Obama to have a national plan that you would like? I'm not a big fan of national plans. I but. kind of didn't agree with that, and I think other people would need to be there. Look, you're in St. St. Charles County. Those schools are going back, uh, I think, all, that, all the time, right? There's right a number choice? that are. There's a few that, that are going to go online for part of the week. Um, I personally believe that this is the perfect example of why we should have comprehensive school choice in the state of Missouri. Parents should be able to decide where their kids want to go. Private schools right now are, by and large, opening up, and if parents want to send their kids there, I think the state money should follow the child. So, local control, but you... Very local control, control of the parent. So, would you let a, so you'd still let a school district decide if they want to open up or not, yep. and the parent could decide, well, they don't want to put their kids in the internet school, they want to go to real school. Yeah, and take the government money with them. Interesting. Let's talk Medicaid expansion. Uh, I have uh, heard you're not a fan. I did not support Medicaid expansion during my time in the House, that's right. So, but there's been not, a, I mean, it's going to happen, right? You just got to prepare for that. You know, it was very close in Oklahoma. I'm interested to see what the results are. Yeah, but they uh, ran a campaign in Oklahoma. They did, uh, and I don't know what we're going to see on Tuesday. But uh, what I do know is that the federal government is broke and that Medicaid expansion will cost Missouri quite a bit of money. Uh, and that money is going to have to come from somewhere, and primarily that's going to be roads, schools, public safety, things that other voters care about. Frank, that, there was no real campaign to put those issues out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I, Carl Beard is going to owe me a beer when this passes handily in yeah. two days. Yeah, I, I think it's going to pass, unfortunately. I, I'm not a fan of Medicaid expansion. I think we need to look at some alternatives to lowering health care costs in this state, whether that's eliminating barriers for, uh, for health care workers come from out of state, to have some licensing and regulatory reform in that area. Let's make our health care field a little bit more competitive. Let's not add more people to the government dole. Could be another issue. Democrats win at the ballot, but uh, on the issues, lose the candidates. Uh, in, well, in terms of Medicaid expansion, I mean, it's, I, for once, I actually agree with you. It's going to pass because sure. it's good policy. And our candidates, like Doug, are going to run on it because that's actually what people want. But if and Doug didn't raise any money his opponent did, he'd probably lose because he couldn't do a campaign, right? Well, we've got people raising money right now, though. Jill Shoup is, is well, out look, there my, absolutely killing it. My point is on the it. Medicaid expansion side, it's going to pass. But there wasn't really a no campaign. The one I saw is like saying 
Mexicans could come and go to the hospital. Yeah, and most of the people that are against it are actually elected officials that have been campaigning against it. And that's why they moved it. And that's why they moved it to August. I, I disagree with that because the numbers show that we're actually going to save money by year two and year three. And at the end of it, we'll be saving close to $600 million. See, so, now, see when you say that, I, I can <clears throat> see that. Some people say they're going to save money year one, and I'm like, oh, that's there, awful hard. To, there's 37 to, states that are doing it now. No, I get you. I'm just yeah. saying, I've heard people make the case in right. year one. I'm, I'm not skeptical year one. hillbilly about year that. I'm with you on Year that. one will cost probably about $50 million. Uh, that's the same money that we borrowed to fix our roads out of GR, which I didn't think was a great decision, you know, instead of pay-as-you-go type thing. So $50 million, if we can find that for the roads, I'm sure we can find $50 million. Well, give me a prediction here on politics that's going to happen in two days. Give me a race that's going to happen. Uh, Missouri Attorney General, I think uh, you're going to see one of our, the candidates, Alad Gross, has been He's one hustling. of the hardest working guys right. in Missouri it's politics hustling. right now. I, I can't say for 100%, but I bet he's even visited Butler I'd County. love to see, too, the, the, the difference in a debate between him and Schmidt. Be awesome. Who's going to win? I think Kathy Swan's going to win down in uh, Cape Toronto. Interesting. I'm going to take the other side. Holly Rader's going to win. You know, I think Holly's favored, but Cape County folks, I know them. I, I'm, I'm interested to see they actually vote not for a Cape County person. Sure. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to be with other representative here. I think it's going to be Holly Rader, and I think uh, Mike Moon's going to take it away in that other race on their side of the state. Interesting. I yeah. think, yeah, he seems like the favorite. Seems like mm -hmm. Bond and Bratton are pretty tight, right? Yeah, those two. Robert Ross looks in a good spot. Jason Bean. I think we'll see a Elaine few Gannon. surprises, but uh, at the end of the day, we got to remember it's uh, all Republicans going to get through in those races, and we're going to start focusing on November after that. Hell of a job Holly Rader does win. With a minute left, Frank, who won the week? I'd say Governor Parson. You know, this week he called a special session to implement law and order back in the city of St. Louis. It's well needed. It's about time. Lawmakers are thrilled to be back and uh, united to get something done. Who won the week? I'm going to say Wild Bill Eigel. I saw you... Uh, <laughs> Rated his race as Safe Eigel, and yeah. uh, he beat back a primary. So. Uh, big money bomb. Yeah, who won the week? Sam Page. He had to make some tough science-based decisions during a campaign, and he put that aside, and he looked at the health of the, the community. Who won the week? Even before I knew he was going to be on here, Representative Doug Beck, new head of the Missouri Building Trades, fighting for working people all over the state. Congratulations. I would say Margie. I mean, nobody's in a tougher spot right now than her. Letting different school districts make their own rules. I think she's at the head of the time uh, to be the head of school. She's done a good job. So if you'll do a good job by joining us next week, and we'll have uh, Senator Ockham join us. This Week in Missouri Politics, sponsored by the Missouri Association of Career Fire Protection Districts, Spire, and Sterling Bank. I'm a history buff, like I know a lot of you are if you watch the show. We're doing a thing of the history of Missouri. We're going to do it one county at a time. We call it Show Me Missouri. We're going to travel to all 114 counties of the state. We'll have a member of the Farm Bureau, a county elected official, some of your state legislators you see here on the show. We're going to talk about the history, what's happening now in the county, and how the two are interconnected. It's a passion project of mine. If you like history, I hope you'll get involved. Follow us. Uh, go to the MissouriTimes.com. You can see it. We'll probably branch it off into its own social media at some point. But you've been so good to us at the Missouri Times, the show, different papers. This is a passion project that I hope you'll enjoy. It's called Show Me Missouri. The history of Missouri, one county at a time. The first county was Polk County. We had a great time. And we hope you'll uh, go to MissouriTimes.com, find out a little bit about it. And if you like the history of the state, I hope you'll enjoy it.